listening is key in talking to a man. Listen to what he says. And then listen to what he don't say. Mm. Yeah, what he don't say is key too. You, you shouldn't have to force a man into saying he want a future with you. Because I believe a man knows when he sits down with you. Oh, this is somebody I could see myself in the future with. He's not sure all the way yet. Right. But he's saying, hmm, she might be, yeah, she look good and smell good and all that, carry herself well. <laughs> and then she, she talk good, good game. So I think ladies need to talk less and listen more. Welcome to Hardly Initiated, where real men talk real shit. Your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Catches. Yo, I, I listen, the energy, I'm feeling that. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to go crazy on this one. Ain't no half-stepping on this show here, man. Yeah, yeah, when, Listen, when I'm feel, feeling tingly inside, and I, yeah. I try to hold the, hold the guest hostage yeah. for my own personal questions, that's how I know we're about to go crazy. Honestly, that might be the Holy Ghost. Oh, right ooh. now. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's in me. <laughs> because we found for y'all, all right, a spiritual leader that we bring in here. Yes, put the camera on this handsome, fresh brother that we got here sitting down on the set. We here rocking with Bishop Greg Davis. Welcome to Harlem. I'm year. a fan. I'm a fan of y'all. I mean, it's good to be here on the couch. That yeah. means a lot. That means a lot. In front of the wall. <laughs> right. The famous wall. Yeah. It's a, it's a, listen, it's a lot that went down with that wall yeah. right behind it. I tell yeah. you that. We got the we got the listen, we got one of the OGs, so we know you about to give us some game for the ladies and the men. Yeah. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no man. And, and and you know, we, we kind of started getting into it. Ryan was going a little too deep. I had to pull it back. Y'all know how Yeah, he was I, over there recording already. He, right. Yeah, <laughs> we, we started we, we popped off with the whole show. But I, I want to talk to you, man, because um I want to talk to that young brother today that's in that space, that right where you was at, Ryan, that young brother that's potentially thinking about, you know, bringing a woman into his life. And I want you to really give us some game. We're going to take this wisdom up out of you on how we should properly go about doing that. Okay. Uh, so so my, my first uh, tweet years ago on relationship was become the right one before you get the right one. Uh, it's always about you first. And I think in, in so many cases, brothers try to grab somebody just for the, you know, they always say, if you're going to be in business, you need the, the right, right person on your side. But the truth of the matter is, have not developed. Uh, a lot of times we're trying to get to the destination and you get more on the journey than the destination. You develop on the journey. So if you grab the wrong person too soon in advance, then they can mess up everything you're building. They're not going in the same direction. So I think you, you need to get yourself together first before you bring somebody else in. Get, get, your, get your bag up, uh, your career, know where you're going, and then choose later rather than sooner because you know what you need. You know the temperament you need. You know where you're going. You know who you are. To grab some, I know they say, well, we can grow together. Yeah, sometimes you grow apart too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes The same person that can help you grow can kill it if you don't have the right one, the right temperament. So I think you need, before you grab somebody and think that you need somebody so soon, I think you need to get yourself together first. I wanna be particular on this too, because when you say get yourself together, put a dollar amount on that. If you can, if you can, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> Cause what, what really is together? Like let, let's be, I think that's still kind of gray on what people think is together. I think together is based upon where your mama was, your mama was broke. And I'm a little bit making a little bit more money than my broke mama, so I'm together. What's really together? That's subjective, on the person. I mean, but should it be? Should to get to getting it together be subjective? Oh, you trying to pin me? To, you good? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm with the real interviewers. Um, <laughs> you know, what's your goal? What's your vision for your life? And, and now, let me say this: the woman that comes along, she got to fit that that that. That forty, I know where y'all trying to go. That forty thousand that they talk about, forty six thousand or that hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And there are women that want both. There are women. There's some women that don't want the six figure man, the high value man. There's some women that just want to be comfortable. I know you're trying to pin me down. You ain't gonna pin me down. It's it's. <laughs> I'm not trying. To, I'm <laughs> oh, not, no, I, know I just want to have a goal. Let's dance. <laughs> I just want to have like so. So let me ask you this: Should a man be trying to marry a woman if he got ten thousand dollars in his account? He's gonna get a ten thousand dollar woman. Hmm. 
Yeah, there are women that that <laughs> you like that. He's gonna get a ten thousand dollar woman. I mean, is that a, is that, I mean is that good? Is the, is a ten thousand dollar woman good? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't think so. No, you what's mean a ten thousand dollar woman? I, it, it's a it, it's a funny thing. I got ready to leave Detroit at at one while, and I asked. Uh, his name was Bishop Andrew Merritt. We went to the IHOP, and he said, he asked me this question. He said, you got $10,000 in the bank? I said, no. He said, then why are you staying here? You ain't got nothing. Now, this is an old season, man. I was younger then. So that's your $10,000 question. It's really nothing in this economy. And that was 20-some years ago. So $10,000 man who has $10,000 in the bank, is his bills paid? Is he in debt? Is he over, is he over his head in debt? How's his credit score? How's all that? You got to give me more than that. Because $10,000 in the bank could be good for somebody and they don't have a lot of debt. But if they have a lot of debt, is $10,000 going out also every mm. month? Then that's nothing. You, a woman has to look at how a man manages his money, how he pays his bills. We have, I have this conversation all the time, uh, you know, because I'm not used to anybody telling me what to buy. I like clothes, all right? I want to buy what I want to buy. But I'm, I'm always told, hey, as long as the bills are paid, you, you good with bills, you, you pay the bills, everything's, we, nothing's being taken from us. So that $10,000 is subjected to what's going out. Because mm. he could have $10,000 in the bank and it's $20,000 worth of bills. He's driving a car that he can't afford. That's why I say you have to get yourself together. I believe what you have in the bank is what you draw. What you make is what you draw, who you draw. Now, Damn. that's that's interesting. What so, you make is who you draw. Now, okay, so you mentioned that a woman should. <laughs> <laughs> Tashawn, I can tell Tashawn gonna bring that heat to this. Oh, so I know. I, oh, he, he is mind going. So yeah. <laughs> now you 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 mentioned about a woman should learn or or you know find out the way a man spends his money, mm -hmm. right? And just find out if he's financially stable and, and so forth. So. What are some ways that a woman can actually do that? Is there some things that she should be looking at? Should she flat out ask? Or how does she pick up this information? Well, here, here I, have, I have a book called Do's and Don'ts of Dating. And one of the things that I say, women should listen more and talk less. Damn. Because a, because a, 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 a <laughs> right. You got two ears for a reason and one, one mouth. A man, a, 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 a no good man, the wrong one can tell you whatever you want to hear to get mm. whatever he wants if he's only after a certain thing. Right. All right. A good man, if he if he wants a future with you, he's going to tell where he's at. Remember, ladies, um, if they don't if they don't talk about you in the future, I say this all the time, then they don't have you don't have a future with them. You don't have to guess because a real man's going to come with the fire and say, hey, yeah, I got this. And. You know, I, by, by age, whatever, I want to buy a house. By age, this, I want to, uh, this is where I want to be. I want to have my own company. I want to do my own thing. He's going to say it. You don't have to ask. He will automatically talk about it. I think the more you ask, um, the less information you really get. So listening is key in talking to a man. Listen to what he says. And then listen to what he don't say. Mm. Yeah, what he don't say is key, too. You, you shouldn't have to force a man into saying he want a future with you. Because I believe a man knows when he sits down with you. Oh, this is somebody I could see myself in the future with. He's not sure all the way yet. Right. But he's saying, hmm, she might be, yeah, she look good and smell good and all that, carry herself well. <laughs> and then she, she talk good, good game. So I think ladies need to talk less and listen more. And then see if he follows through with what he's saying. You'll find out what he makes. You don't have to say, so how much you make? To me, that turns a man off. It Listen, 100% it Cause does. Because then I think you, and then when you go to talking, well, you know, I got this bill, let's do. Well, what was you doing before I came along? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and first of all, if a woman got to ask, that just means she's not that experienced. Because a woman with some, with some wisdom up under her, she ain't even got to ask. She can see the way you talk, the way you dress, how you move, Absolutely. where you shop, where well, you live, confidence. who your friends, who your company. Because there's some know. flexes out there. It's, I mean, I'm just, because you can, you can it's certain things you can't fake. You can't fake friends. Yeah, right? the like friends. You, you part. can't fake. It's certain things you. That's and that's the thing but about what a woman. you wear because you know there's a lot of there's a lot of people there's oh, a lot yeah, of brothers yeah, yeah, yeah. that will flex with certain pieces. That's true. And they use the same pieces every day they go on. They don't have no other pieces. That's true. They, yeah, they, they got yeah, the first yeah. day outfit, the second day outfit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and so, 
<laughs> the sound effects for me. No, you, you can't go by what they wear because a lot of millionaires, they, they wear tore up jeans. I'm not talking about the ones that you buy now, but they tore up because they've been wearing them. They're in, uh, they're in old truck pickup. Some Everybody don't dress the part. So right. you, uh, that's something I want to say to women too. You miss out on a lot of good men by looking at how he dress and how he carries himself. But then you do want to look at his friends. His yeah. friends is a reflection of who he is. So here's my issue, right? My issue is, I think as men, we're expected to hold off on really choosing a woman until we get ourselves to a certain place. Mm -hmm. Which, like you said, in today's economy, in today's space, you really got to dust yourself off and really put yourself and put the work into yourself as a man and put the time and energy into yourself to get yourself to a certain point. And it's expected that we, you know, wait till we get to this place before we deal with women, because before then it's just considered like you've you stringing a woman along or you just wasting a woman's time if you're not in this place before you deal with a woman. Right now, is there a healthy way to along the journey be able to bring women into your space Absolutely. and deal with women on a play play basis before you actually get to where you're supposed to be? Yeah. Cause, Cause, see, I have this concept that dating is data. Okay, you, you you're getting data from the person, so I think you can bring them along, but I don't think until you know at least have some kind of idea of where you're going. That's what I'm speaking of. You have some kind. You can bring them along, and you can eliminate as you go. No, this is not working. This is not working. But you should at least. I go back to this point. At least know where you're going. So you're getting data. You you're talking to. To this one, you're talking that you're getting data, but in getting the data, it has to compute. And if you don't have nowhere, if you don't know where you're going, then there's nothing to compute. Mm. You you don't have any. Inf what are you taking information for? What are you getting data for? And you don't even know where you're going. A man should have a vision. The woman follows the vi vision of the man. We agree with that. that I, listen, we agree with that. I'm just not oh, sure. I'm not talking about the pushback. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I ain't yeah. About but pushback. I absolutely agree with you. Okay, absolutely. So if he has no vision for his life, then what is she following? So that's why I say he should have. There's brothers out here, they, they don't have no vision for their life. What, why would a woman follow a man? You know, it's that whole thing of, uh, I don't know if I want to go there. Never mind. I was going to talk about being subjective and, so, yeah, and all that. But I, I don't believe in following a, a, a man who has no vision. Mm. If I have no vision for my family, then I'm taking my, my wife, my partner, my children on a blind journey. Is there, is, there, is there a healthy way, and by the way, I agree with what you're saying, but is there a healthy way that we could have like, um, in this day and age, that you could really have like casual sex with, with <laughs> one of your partners? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'm speaking as Greg, I'm not speaking as the bishop. Uh, casual sex is, is dangerous because we always, the, the, the Oh, you getting me? I, I I promise you, I'm not gonna be a bishop after this show. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Casual sex is dangerous uh, because even though you say to a woman, because they come from the emotional side, this is just casual. You know, th this ain't really going nowhere, or I, I that's not where I'm at. You know, I, I feel you, but I don't want a future with you. She'll say okay. But it's hard for a woman not to attach themselves, especially, don't let it be good. Because you know women tell it either way. Right. They're going to tell you, this old school, okay? They're going to tell it if it's good, and they sure enough going to tell it if it's bad. Mm -hmm. So they're going to tell it either way, but then they, they grow feelings. And so to have casual sex with a woman, a man can let off seeds and keep going. A woman receives and she holds them. So it's hard. To have casual sex, in my, in my opinion. Now, do you recommend women to uh, have casual sex? Do you, well, because I know you said it's dangerous, you right? So, would you, you recommend? Would you, would, you, would you recommend them? I don't well, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like all your well, videos. So, I, came in. I recommend one teaspoon of casual sex. Right. Well, because the thing is, women, you know, it, you know, the sexual, liber you know, feeling sexually liberated, and you know, women are now saying that it's okay for them to have as many sexual partners as they would like and this thing about body count doesn't actually matter so i'm just going to ask you this how do you think i think your i think your chart matters more than body count what does your chart say my chart anyway 
Wait, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you say you think our chart? What was the, that? The, the, your, your health chart. When you go to the doctor, the chart. That does matter. The it does chart. matter. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. I don't even Most think people consider health. health. It's like not even a consideration of sex these days. Facts. That's what it seems like. Yeah. Anyway. So when it comes to women, I would ask you this. How do you recommend they navigate the sexual marketplace? You know, because women, sometimes they say, hey, if I don't have sex, then the guy's not going to continue to date me. If I do, then guys think I'm a slut. So what would, what would you, how would you recommend them navigate that be, fine line? Be true to who you are. Be true to what it is that you want. Um, who cares about what the guy says? Um, that should be the ones you eliminate, the ones that say, hey, you do what you, you do what you feel comfortable with. And I'm not speaking as the bishop, I'm speaking as what's, I speak from what's happening, not what, what the church say I should say, mm. because people are having sex. Right. So I say if you if you have to be true to what, what it is that you want to do, you shouldn't feel pressured. If you're attracted to somebody, if you want to be with somebody, make sure they want to be with you. And it's not, um, you know, I just want to have sex with you. Um, I think that we're pressured. The very thing that we're on right now, social media, mm -hmm. pressures um, women to have sex, got to have sex, and she really don't want to. Uh, it, even this whole thing of, you know, I'm I'm, I'm flew you out and you got to have sex. Get your own trip. You, you, don't, you don't need to be flew out to have sex. Work and, yeah. But I think you should not be pressured to have sex casually or in any in, in any other way. Any, any, any otherwise, I think you should do what, what you're true to doing. Bishop, I mm. think these women want to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> and they do. They do. They and, well, and, and see, now here's the thing. I think it's more, I, I don't know if it's pressured as much as programming, mm. right? Because I do think from a very early age, we introduce the sex. And I mean, every day. Well, it's all over now. It's, it's all everywhere. over. Correct. Social media. It's all over. You and I think look the knob is wrong, just turning. You go look at one wrong picture and it's all over your feed. Mm -hmm. It's all over. It, it, it's everywhere. Brainwashing us with this sex. Yeah. So in, in many ways, both, you know, us men and women are just becoming more sexual creatures. But, so, I, but, I don't, but, but here's the thing. Sex was not made to, was not created to be perverted or to be bad. I think we made it into this bad thing. You know, uh, sex is a, it's a wonderful, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> you look at me. I just want to say amen. It's, 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 it's a great thing. It, you hear what I'm saying? It's a great thing. But, but I think also, with it, like in anything else, you have to be disciplined. And I, I don't think the discipline is there because the images are everywhere. And I think that there is a pressure. And I do think women want to have sex. I don't think women admit that. I don't think women admit that because I think it's always been a dirty thing for a woman to say it, but a man can say it. Mm -hmm. So I don't mm -hmm. think women readily say, oh, I really want to have sex. I mean, how many women you really hear say that? But you're right. They, they do want to have it, but they act like they don't. It's two things everybody wants, but they don't want to talk about it. That's money and sex. Yeah. So on the opposite end, with men, would you recommend a man entertain, seriously entertain a woman that has a promiscuous sexual pass? If it's the pass. Okay. Yeah, why not? We all have a pass. Is it all right for a man to have that kind of pass and she still deal with him? I think, I think, I think we're, we're in, so many, in so many ways we are hypocritical. Mm. I think if she's had, if that's in her past and it's really in her past. See, but that's the thing. How you know? Because yeah. I, think, I think the past is important, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, before we, you lend out some money, what they going to do? They going to check your pass. <laughs> this is and good they, cop, bad cop. I see what you And they say, <laughs> they say, based on this past, you're not about to get this loan. You're not about to get this car. You're not about to get this house. Yeah, but over some years, even, even you filing bankruptcy drops off. That's true. Yeah, I had bad credit. I, it wasn't I had bad credit. I just didn't use credit. I spent cat. Now I have A1 credit. That, my old report was in the past. I can get it now, to your point. So do we really want, we could miss out on the best person in our lives by saying they had a lot of sex in their past. So what? As long as it's not, I mean, how many relationships we would not, we would not be in any relationship if it's based upon our past. Mm. 
we've all done something in the past. Because I, I, I do think, Bishop, I do think it's different. So it's all right for a man to hoe around. So yes. I don't want to say, so, <laughs> so see, hoeing ho around, see, so it's, it's levels to it. Because it's I never do to think hoard them. It's, it's, well, it's <laughs> types of horn, but put it like this, types of horn. I think there's a way to do it with a lack of integrity, and I think there's a way to do it with, with a level of integrity, right? And when I say that, I mean, there's a way to go out, go out, lie to all these women, and be dishonest about what you're doing, and there's a way to tell a woman straight up where you stand, what it is. I heard you should always tell a woman where you stand. 100%. Yeah, so she right. know. But then don't expect the woman, because they, they, again, they are emotional. Don't expect the woman to stick to that. Most women do not stick to you telling them where you, where you they still going to run behind you because... They get emotionally attached. Do we agree with that? Uh, no, one hundred percent agree. And I'm glad you said that because men will try to convince themselves, like, "Yo, I told you what the situation was." It's like, "Come on, bro, you knew no. what you was doing." One hundred percent. But yeah. see, it, are you wrong for that though? Like, is is a dude wrong for being honest about it, having sex? This woman now catches feelings. Was he was he really in the wrong for that? I don't think he's in the wrong, but we know, we know, we like we having this conversation right now. This is not a new conversation. We know women think emotion they get attached and then they wonder man she's crazy bust my windows out of my car and did all that stuff she she great you knew it we we know it we just take the chance because we don't think from the top here we think from the bottom head mm. <laughs> <I love this laughs> bottom head get you good time sometimes yeah. right now, but, but, see, but, but see, that's what i mean just being clear when i say having a level of integrity i just mean being honest about your intentions and not, you know, and, and not running around being dishonest about what you want. But going back to it, if a man is honest about it and he has, you know, a couple sexual partners in an honest capacity and everybody know where they stand. Yes, I'm not saying it ain't going to be no casualties at war. I'm not saying it's people gonna are not going to be. I'm not saying nobody going to get upset. But what I am saying is for a man to put himself realistically in that position, he's probably had to do some work on himself to be even attractive enough to that for, to, for women to be even attracted to him at that level. Yeah, but how many how many times have we read in the news though that men get in trouble because because of those very things and women can say you did something without their permission? Or One thousand percent. So are we are, are we willing? I mean, we're reading about it now. Are we willing to take that chance? It depends on what the the brother you are. Well, and I think for women, I think you know women that have this higher body count, and just from my experience, they usually have some kind of trauma from the past that is still for whatever, you know, for whatever reason showcasing looking itself. For, uh, looking for love. Or looking for love. Daddy love. Yeah. And, missing, yeah. and it doesn't, you know, as a man, it, it takes some work to go out and if I want to sleep with a bunch of women, it does take a lot of work, right? Yeah. Because you got to present yourself in a certain way. You got to achieve a certain level of success. But for women, if a woman just wants to go out and have a bunch of sex, I mean, she, a woman could literally just walk down the street and ask a dude, a random dude, if they want to have sex and, a, you know, a dude, <laughs> depending on how she look, he might just agree to it. So I do think when I think about a woman who's had a lot of sex partners, I just think, wow, this is kind of just low level to me because, you know, you're a very successful man. Tyshawn as well, I can, you know, uh, consider myself and Q in that group as well. And it's not a lot of us. So if a woman is saying she has sex with a, you know, 50, 60, 100 dudes, I'm just like, who are these dudes? Yeah. You know, it's not a bunch of Tyshawn's, Ryan's and, and Bishop, Bishop Briggs. So, you know, it just seems as, as low level. So even if it is. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> right. I mean, you got, even if you got a bunch of successful dudes running up in you. <laughs> right. I mean, come but, on now. But, but isn't it about value too? The value you have in yourself? You know, how much, how much do you value yourself? I don't think we even think about that part. If she's having random dudes, that's a, that's a lot of numbers right there. You just said yeah, and well, that's the happening. That's happening. Well, see, the reason I say that number is because of what's happening. Social media, right? What's happening yeah. is when it's it's odd. Women are actually going on camera, and they're randomly getting interviewed while intoxicated. In most cases, it looks like, and they're answering these questions. And these are the type of numbers that they're saying, which is yeah. is insane. And Bishop, look, listen. I went to college. Watch it. This is this is real, right? It's not uncommon for each semester a woman to rack up about three guys. Honestly, that's like. Two, three guys like on an average end of the spectrum in a healthy semester. A semester about four months, a guy about every month, a month and change. That is easy to do when you're going out from Thursday to Saturday night. And you talk about over a four or five year span, you're talking about in college alone. What's that? Three times two, that's six, six times four, that's 20. You could easily rack up 20 to 30 bodies in college. And like this is something that's, that's, that's I don't know if it's really talked about from that in that like very practical manner, 
but it's something that happens and it is happening. But I want to go back to, do you all agree that it has a lot to do with the way a woman sees herself? Yeah. And yes. the value that she has. Okay. Yes. I, I love a designer. I tell the story. I, I love Louis Vuitton. All right. Louis Vuitton tells you what you're going to pay for their stuff. You ever seen a Louis Vuitton sale? No, no, nah. never. You ever seen a Louis Vuitton outlet? <laughs> no. <laughs> you see Gucci, you see Prada and all these other designers. That's because they tell you what their product is worth. I think that if women begin to realize their value, just like Louis Vuitton, and stop discounting themselves with this man and that man. I, I know that sounds easier said than done, but I think many times women don't know their worth, their value. I understand that it has a lot to do with lack of a father at home and trying to find love and all that, but it has to do with, and, and, and podcasts like this, are, 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 they're valuable. When you know your value, you won't devalue yourself in just three a, three a semester. For a semester, fifty to hundred. No, what, you, what should you I right. do then? So, right. like, okay, I, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. I'm raising up a young daughter mm -hmm. because listen, I don't listen. Some of these girls with fathers ain't even safe. All right, I done seen some wild <laughs> wild women with fathers. So, if I want to make sure I teach or instill values in my daughter the best way I can, what should I be doing? Teaching her worth. What does that look like? Telling her. See, it's so funny. We just had this subject on my clubhouse uh, room. I have a clubhouse room every day. And I think fathers talk to daughters like fathers instead of men. Did y'all get that? Mm. We, don't tell, we don't tell our daughters who we were mm. or who we might even be. We talk to them. We give them the, the pretty picture instead of saying, hey, you know why I can tell you this? Because I was that man or I did that. I had a body count. We talked to them with this little pretty picture of this is what you do. Don't be with a man that's like this. And we don't really tell them that we had a past. This is who your dad was. And we don't want to tell the truth. We have to tell the truth of what's going on. Not, not you keep yourself. You don't talk to this. No, I was that man at one point. And I think we talked to our daughters as fathers only, not as, as men that was there. I don't, I don't have a pretty background. Neither did my father. Mm. It was because of my grandfather that I'm who I am today, but my papa was a, is a Rolling Stone, still living. So I fight the demons of my father on a regular basis. On a regular basis. I, I like that advice too. And I think um, a lot of the women do need to be protected by their fathers and also communicated to them, frankly. And um, I was Can telling- Can I say something? There has to be yeah. a, a chain. There has to be, when you get older and your, your, your daughters get older, then you start talking to them in a different way. I have a daughter who's 28 years old, very successful. It shifted. She started asking me about how should a man take out on a date? You know, should she ever pay? Do, you know, opening the door, being a gentleman. She, act, she asked me these questions starting in the last four or five years as she got older. So our relationship shifted because she saw the kind of man that I was. But she also knew her dad was not a perfect man. I've, I've been blogged about it. I've had, you know, children out of wedlock. Like I don't have a great, great bishop pass. That's the reality of a man. Yes, I'm your father. I was a good father, took care of you. But the reality is, daddy was a man too. Mm. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, that was that was great game. It, Cause so fathers, make sure you yeah. tell all your daughters that your body count <laughs> <laughs> and keep it real with them, so they know no, what no. the situation is. But they need that game because um, I was telling Tasha, I was telling Tasha about man, this. <laughs> I, I met this. This was actually this week, early this week. I met this young lady, and I was telling Tasha, and I'm like, man, because you know I've been chilling. I'm like, you know what? Let's get, let's grind, let's grind for the next few months. I'm gonna stop, you know, messing around in the streets and. Um, I, I thought she was about to say something else. Go no, ahead. no, no. I told Tyshawn. <laughs> no, no, no. I told Tyshawn, I said, man, I might have to get back in the game. He's like, why? I said, man, I just went to go grab some food up the street. And, man, I met this gorgeous young lady and we had a great conversation. And, you know, I ended up buying her lunch. Just met her in line. Dope. Great conversation. Hung out for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. It was cool. And the, the following day, this is the first time she called me, right? The first time she called me was like 11 o'clock. 
And as soon as I seen her name on my phone at 11 o'clock, it instantly went. She was here. It went. I, I, yeah. Then when I get on the phone with her, I'm talking to her for a little bit. Within the first 10, 15 minutes of the conversation, she's like, yeah, so do you, do you drink? Do you smoke? And it was like. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you know, she tried to get me to agree to go out. But I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Let, we, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. So all of a sudden, because I would have took this chick out. All of a sudden, my response was, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even trying to go out. Like, what you mean? What, what you want to do? I was like, you can just come over here. I would not have even offered that if she had not done those two things. She, went to, she, went, she went to college? She went, she went to college? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't missed college. Already know. She, she, she done ran about two to, th- no, but, two to but, three. But just but, off but, those but, two things. But do you notice what you just said? It's what I said. You helped what I said. Her value went down. Yeah. She called you at 11 o'clock. Yep. Her value went down. All right. And immediately no i don't want to go out just come on over here exactly this, this ain't this is all it is exactly. you, come you, come you, been down. you want to go out, <laughs> right. you just find out i just found out <laughs> right i just found out but even those small things that you communicate to your daughter how to operate within the relationship and within those dynamics of meeting a, a man that you know um, a nice man that they might like you got to really educate them because otherwise they go out they make these mistakes and this young lady is going, you know. One of the things that, that my daughter brought up to me, <laughs> she went out with a guy and all he did for the whole time, and, and, and me and Brooke have talked about that, all he did was talk about himself. Wow. What he made, his car. Oh man. His cars, he got, yeah. She makes almost six figures herself. She's an editor for a, a big media company. She drives a wonderful car. She has all that herself. So you can't impress, brothers, you can't impress a woman that's already doing something themselves. Because mm. her value is here. Right. Already. She's looking. And, and that's what I say to women all the time. Increase your value so you increase your pull. Who you, who, where you are is who you're going to pull. She, she lost her value because of the few things she did. Just she very didn't even quickly. Know it. She, and, and didn't even know it. Have no idea. Have no idea. Because, some see... <laughs> to, to another man, that had been okay. Mm. But because of your value and your standards, we have no standards. We have no deal breakers. We say we have deal breakers, but we break the deal. You can't have deal breakers and break the deals. That's now, what, now look, yeah. Ryan didn't say that. She wasn't going to get taken up through that now. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, that's no, as far no, as it's going to no, go. No, <laughs> no, he just, yeah, he put it in a category. Yeah, she got a glass yeah. ceiling now. Yeah, she that, didn't he, get put, promoted he put it in a this. different category. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me ask you this, Bishop, because you mentioned your daughter. She's doing very well, you know, six-figure career. And, you know, assuming she wants to take care of herself, she can. So what is your philosophy on uh, the financial responsibility in the relationship? Who should bear the financial responsibility? The man. Okay. Call me old school all you want to. I, I, I think when I say that, I mean the basics. You know, I'm talking the mortgage, whatever, rent, mortgage, car, utilities. Then when you get past there, he's he's over there. But why, you know, but we hear that conversation a lot. I might shoot this. I don't story. believe in fifty fifty. Why though? Why why do you feel if you if you if a way? man want to lead, lead, mm. lead? You want to lead. You want her to listen to you. You want her to to, to be subjective. You want to be the visionary. You want to lead. Then lead for, lead with the money too. Don't just lead with sex. Lead lead with everything. You want to be the man. Be the man. Lead. She want to she wanna do other things. She want an extra car or want to say be the person safe for vacation or just do some other things around there. That's fine. But I think the, the, the main bills should be the man. So you paying the lead. bills is a, is, a, is a form of leadership. It is. It, that's my opinion. While you're over there cooking up something. No, I like there. that. Yeah. I like that. that. Yeah. Lead. We want to say the man is the leader. I want you to listen to me. I believe that a woman listens to a man less if he's not leading by paying the bills. Why do I have to respect you? If I have to help share, then I should help share in the decision and everything else. Mm. So lead. Brothers lead. Yeah, if you want to lead, lead with your money. We lead with our money all the time. We talk about it. That's how you win. Most men win, win women over leading with their money. They lead with the money. They talk about their money. I'm going to get you this. Yeah. So lead when it comes to being the head of the home. I like that. It's funny because I see women, you know, it's certain women, they, they look, they, it's so funny. Because I'm thinking about you, right? You mm-hmm. got a very attractive wife. 
So I seen you coming here. You smell Thank good. You. You're fresh. I'm like, he looks successful. Seen your wife. I'm like, he is successful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the reason I, I say that, the reason I say that is Let me because. Let fiance before they say, oh, he got married fiance. Yo, your fiance. The <laughs> reason I say that is because I really do think it's, it's women who carry, who carry themselves a certain way and they look a certain gorgeous. way. It's yeah. like, it's no way that she pays 50% 50, 50 of the bills well, she in my so. mind. No. And uh, but but and I think that women who try to hold on to it, the 50 50 is like it's something about them that is just not right. Yeah. You know, so, so I'm, I want to know your perspective on a woman who wants to lead financially. Like that's her desire to lead financially. What do you think is going on internally with that woman? You know, I, I actually posted this and the video did amazing. And believe it or not, you're not going to believe this. A lot of the women were the ones that were telling me out there, no, this is not your grandparents. This is... When actually, when they quoted my grandparents, my grandmother worked because mm. she wanted to. She was a domestic, she was a housekeeper. She cleaned offices because she didn't want to, I don't want that man's money, I want my own money. So every day she went to work. She did it all. She cooked before she went to work, took care of us. Um, so that's not an old way of thinking because I know a lot of, in growing up, a lot of women that worked and didn't have to. My grandfather, successful pastor and construction worker, made $30, $40 an hour back in the day, in the 70s, 80s. So to, to, answer, to answer your question, um, I think women have had to um, lead for themselves so long that when they have a good man, in a lot of cases, this is just my opinion, they still want to because they don't believe that this is this is too good to be true. Mm. I don't want to lose. He may he may walk out. He may he may leave me. So I still want to, I want to have that sense of security. You know I don't want to be threatened by by not having. You know I'm so used to being secure that oh no you mean he's going to you no I still want to do because that's still their security security blanket. All men are not the same. They're not created equal. There are some good men that really want to lead, take care of the bills, make sure you're comfortable and make sure you're secure. But I think it's so hard in this society, this social media society that we see that women want to be in their bags. And, and, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, but in a lot of cases don't know how to uh, lead in the boardroom, but come home and leave that at the door and trust her man to have her. Um, I think many times they bring that boardroom mentality and women do have to be stronger in the boardroom mm -hmm. to prove who they are. Mm -hmm. But I think in a lot of cases when they get home, they don't know how to switch. And to me, the best three words a woman can hear from a man is I got you. I got you. You don't have to worry about anything. You, you, your money is your money. You, you mentioned my fiance, she, she has her own thing that she's doing, her own brand um, that she's doing, events and stuff she was doing before I came along. But I'm, I'm supporting, I'm strengthening her to do that and be there for moral support and financial support. Um, but she's a stay home uh, uh, mom, she has a daughter. And she don't, I told her she didn't have to work, but I'm not stopping her from doing her brands and all that because that would kill her. Mm. But that's hers. And I, I give to that. I invest in it. But it's hers. It also g lets me give less money to her because she have her own too. <laughs> <laughs> no, Let I'm me ask you, do, do you think that deep down um, in the just very core of a woman that the ideal situation is for her man to be able to provide in that way? I think so. Yeah, I, 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 I do. I, uh, let me, um, I think that we can we can carry that burden of the bills and 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 home you know making sure bills are paid the business part i don't really think women should have to carry that burden of making sure you know the bills and everything is and then i think we're hypocritical cuz we want them to support us and be there for us but we want them to do the same thing that we're doing so, so and do all that and i'm curious to know what should a woman's burden be it's a, it, it, see, there's no cookie. That's a good question. There's no cookie cutter. I think it, it thinks the burden is whatever it is for that relationship, that situationship, that marriage. 
I don't think it's cookie cutter. I think, I think, of course, the children, but then there's a different paradigm now than it was with my grandparents because now women have careers, but we want them to still come home and cook, make sure the house is clean, make sure the children are getting paid, but what are we doing with our foot up on the couch or right. watching TV, <laughs> getting, the, getting, getting the drink or, or whatever, you know? I think that's unfair. I am, I am, I'm not a believer in roles now. I used to be. Mm. In gender roles? Yeah. You don't believe in gender roles? No, I think you do whatever needs to be done, whoever. I'll pick up. Around. But if you say men need to pay the bills, that's a gender role. Yeah, well, I didn't say everything was absolute. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say everything. There's nothing absolute. You, you, you have a good but it's guess. ideal. It's ideal. Yeah, I would it's, say so. it's ideal. It's ideal. So, I mean, there's an ideal activity or role we should be playing. Yes. And in the ideal role, the man is going about assuming financial responsibility. Yes. And assuming that that's the case, what's the ideal role the woman's taking on? Woman's taking on in that, in that situation particularly. I think, I think the woman should oversee the home, but oversee looks different for me. Oversee means that if we have enough money, she oversees the housekeeper. Oversee means she oversees making sure that the food is there, but she don't have to cook it. Whatever your resources can Whatever afford. Whatever your resources right. can afford. You know, a housekeeper, somebody to cook, somebody to meal prep, somebody to help with the children. If, and I know, well, everybody don't have that kind of money. I understand. But you have to make work work for you what your ideal situation is. Women are more nurturing. I mean, we all know that. They're more nurturing with the children. Um, they're better with the children. I mean, the father needs to do what he does as the father. He's that, that voice of reason, that stern voice. Um, but I think that the woman needs to oversee, the ideal role is to oversee it. But why can't I, why can't I help if I have that in me to do? All men don't, but if I have that in me, why can't I help with it? It's not just, oh, you do this, or you do that. I didn't say she can't help with the bills. I said that the main bills should be the woman's, I mean, the man's um, ideal situation. You now, know, when, when, you oh, out, oh, oh. <laughs> when, when you out there, you know, you grinding, you bring mm -hmm. it home the bacon, so to speak, providing for the family, and, you know, the woman contributes to that. Maybe not directly, like she's not with you day, hourly, you know, mm -hmm. type of deal, but she contributes to that to your mental peace, you know, kind of the nurturing, all of this good stuff. But she may not necessarily get the credit, so to speak, that you'll get from this notoriety of being able to provide for the family and that type of deal. So how do you show your woman that you are appreciative and that she is providing something that is of equal value, even though she may not be, quote unquote, bringing home the baby? By saying it as much as you can. By, by saying it, affirming her uh, as much as you can, as much as, and I don't think brothers do that enough. Mm. I think we take women for granted in their role. I think we, I think we play their role down that because I'm out in the workforce doing what I do, uh, whatever it is I do, um, that what she's doing at home is not as important. If the, if the foundation, which is the home falls, then everything, he can't come home to peace. He can't come home to a, a, a wonderful environment because it's be, the woman, and that's why it's important for women to make sure that the home is a, a place of peace and he can lay his lap there, he can trust her, the environment is conducive, especially if she's a stay home mom. But I think many times they're not appreciated. Um, he has to affirm her as much as possible. And even every now and then, say, hey, baby, you ain't got to worry about it today. I got somebody coming in and do that. Mm. I got a chef coming over. I got somebody coming to get the laundry. We can't afford a housekeeper all the time, but I got somebody to do the deep cleaning, coming in and do all that stuff. You can support her with words, but you can also support her with deeds. A spa day. That makes sense. We'll provide her with some level of relief yeah. from her typical duties. Yeah, because I think many times men downplay the role of a woman. And y'all know what they say behind every great man is a greater woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they also say is that typically, oh. <laughs> 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 hey, you know, I want to ask you this too, because mm -hmm. 
One thing, uh, as, as we talk about the relationship and your relationship in particular, he walked up in here with a not just a beautiful woman, but with a young woman, right? Uh -huh. Oh, we got to talk about that. And so this is the thing, right? We talking about... I didn't, I didn't notice that. You didn't even notice. No, we don't look at we don't look at age. <laughs> <laughs> well, this world does. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. And it's a nice little gap. And I'm talking about we had a whole conversation about this for a while on our platform prior. And this seems to be a big issue with our society. Um, you gotta and just specifically You do know it's nothing new. Yeah, it's really this a fake actually, issue because these are how relationships work. Yeah, this this issue is more new than, mm -hmm. you know, actually dating somebody younger than yourself. Mm -hmm. Would you say that a man prefers or would you actually recommend a man date a younger woman? I recommend a man dating what his his pleasure is, what he likes. Um I I don't I don't recommend you dating somebody younger, somebody older. I'd recommend you dating what you like. Well, personally, let me ask you this. Why, why did you preference a younger woman where you were in life? Um, where I am now, I've been married before. I was married um, 20 years to someone that was older, actually. Wow. Yeah. 20 years? I was married 20 years. How, how much older, by the way? Um, six years. Okay. Six, seven years older than me. Um, when I divorced, we divorced simply because we grew apart. We did ministry, we did churches, and that's all we did. Children, building this, building that. I was at a different place in my life. Actually, when I, when I divorced, I said, I'm dating younger. I said, my daughter's now, I have two daughters, one older, uh, they're 10 years apart. And I said to them, I said, I'm going to date younger. And they said, hey, we don't care as long as you, they don't hurt you. And we know you ain't going to let that happen or use you. Uh, it's what I prefer because I have a young soul, I have a young spirit, I, I, I have young ideals, um, I take care of myself, you know, I run, I walk. Uh, I wanted somebody that was gonna keep me youthful. Mm. I wanted to stay, one of the things that I prayed, and I don't wanna make this deep, to the Lord is that I would continue to be relevant to this generation. And look, I'm sitting with y'all, old, old dude. Right? Um, and most of the people that follow me is your generation um, based upon statistics. So I wanted to stay relevant. I wanted to stay young. Um, and so, and then I wanted somebody to love me. And, and I'm, I'm gonna get older. I want somebody that loves me and, and not gonna throw me in a, a old folks home and I'd be, <laughs> right. I'd be like Charles on, on Tyler Perry's movie, sitting in the tub. <laughs> she threatens me with that every now and then. I'm just letting y'all know that too. <laughs> No, that that those are my reasons. I mean, I think I think if you're single, this is overall you should get what you want. And that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody that was going to help keep me young. Well, first of all, that's what I'm not gonna cut you off, but that's what it sounds like that's what every man low key wants. You, you right. here's the thing, you talk about if a man should get what he wants. Listen, I don't know not one man who don't want a woman to take care of him, want a woman to keep him young and keep him fresh. Young and beautiful. Wants a woman who's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? Like, so it, it, it really makes sense. It really makes sense. I mean, I, I think you're trying to go ahead and play it the nice way. But if you had to recommend this, if, if, look, if we, we, we can cut all these cameras off right now. And I had to ask you, should I go about dating me a younger woman or give me somebody a little bit older than myself? You will most likely, it sounds like just from what, the way you worded it, the benefits of a younger woman, you'll probably tell me I should go about dating a younger woman. I say get what you want, but I would recommend it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and you, you know, you wise, too. Like, when, you, when you're when dating a younger woman, you know, I remember I had this, uh, this young lady, she asked me, she was like, wow, she was like, you really know Atlanta? How do you know all these dope places? And I was just literally, in my mind, I thought, well, probably because I'm 10 years older than you. <laughs> I don't even go out that much. I'm just old, you know what I mean? But it does have this, like, you, as a man, you, you like to be the wise one, and, you know, and you like to get new ideas. But you know, but I never think about that. I really? Never think, I never, I, my hand to God, I never think about that I know more than her. Although she taps in to, to my Ryan over there manipulating. No, 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 no. Not no more, but I have a certain level of experience that, that I can is? share. I can tell, I can tell he liked that. He's like, oh yeah, I'm older. I should know no more than you. No, 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 no. No, no, I just like to feel good about introducing people to new things. You know? That's what they be saying about the old now, man. Y'all like, like that, to though. manipulate. Ryan is, they, Ryan, is, Ryan is like the, I want to. 
Like, ooh, y'all should try this. Like, he he is the always one trying to put you on some new yeah, stuff. And I don't want to talk to no woman. You're like, I already did that. I'm like, okay, well. But but I seriously, I think I can teach her where I've been, and she she can she can keep me fresh and young. Now y'all right. ask, you know, is she the one that keep me dressed like this? Actually, no, I was dressing like this before. I actually, she actually be telling me, what you think I should wear? So <laughs> first of all, look, by the way you dress, I know you're a player. Right, 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 right. right, right. 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 Oh, you gotta say. I'm looking after at the, after this, we, don't like, get, we don't get his body count off the from? camera. Right, right, right. I'm Actually, six. I don't have a lot of body count, and that's really real. no, because I was married. I was married twenty years, and yeah, I was not me the damn thing. No, <laughs> fair, no, see, no I, 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 I actually believe this: if you're gonna play and if you're gonna cheat, then you might as well stay single. I'm not gonna get with somebody. I'm not just saying that because she's sitting over there. If you're gonna be with somebody, why would you? Why would you? marry somebody or be with somebody and cheat when you can just stay single and just hoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Did you, so, well, I mean, that's a good, I, I agree with that. Point, yeah. I, yeah. I, I agree with that. Now, when you initially got divorced, did you think there was any way that you would actually take on another wife? Yeah. I'm oh, a relationship wow. person. Okay. Got you. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I like being in a relationship. Um, I have not been in a lot of them, but I like, I like, I like having my own person. I'm a relationship. I, I'm really, uh, she's gonna love this. I, I'm really the cleaning typer. I like being around mm, my really? person. Yeah, I, I do. Um, it's toxic, huh? <laughs> I said it's toxic. It's toxic. No. But, but after twenty, after twenty years, I mean, what do you? We wasn't gave around you? each other. Yeah, we did business. That's what you don't understand. Oh, we, we did business. Okay. It, 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 yeah, we we had three different. We live in three different places. I we had a place in Philly. We had a place in Delaware. I had a place in Detroit. I was flying back and forward to Detroit doing my television show on the Word Network. And we had two churches. We had all that stuff. So we we never was in the same place. And when I did come home to talk, we had nothing to talk about but business. Mm. So that's why I'm saying to, to those that are watching and you're younger, you know, climb the ladder, but don't forget your family. There's a lot of stuff I missed with my kids because I was building. I'm not building, and I'm always building, but I'm not building my name and my reputation and all that kind of stuff. I'm building upon, so now I have more time for family. I have more time to help her build than even making it about about me. I'm, you, I'm, I'm in legacy mode. I, I, love, I mean, I actually like that you said legacy that. But, but see, I, I think mm -hmm. as I hear successful men talk about that, they all describe that happening now mm -hmm. because there's no way that you can, in order to really achieve high levels of success, like you really have to obsess mm -hmm. in that area, right? Mm -hmm. And with obsess, obsession comes neglect. Absolutely. And, and, and it happens all the time. So something is going to get neglected. Absolutely. And a lot of successful men all have the same testimony that- I'm not willing to neglect now though. But see, but, but here's the thing, you 60 now. Yeah. So the neglect has already taken place. Yeah. But that neglect is also directly related to your level of success that and there you've was, had now. Yeah, and, and there were casual, casualties. There sure, but see, I 100% I agree. Yeah. And it's like, I think that just comes with, like, you really have it to does. make an honest decision. It does. With, like, if you want this level of success, you just have to understand that this is what it comes with. Yeah. Because I don't think that you can have that level without the casualties. You know what my ex-wife told me? And I don't talk about it that much because I don't. I, I tend not to live in the past, but you know. And, and I remember this was in the kitchen, before, our last conversation, mm. very last conversation. She said, "You know, the only thing that hurts me, some little floozy gonna come along. Don't take it personal. Some little floozy, <laughs> <laughs> some little floozy gonna come along, and she gonna get the best of you. Mm. Damn, what, what we built. She's right. If you look at it like that, it, 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 it's true." Um, but now my, my, what I want is different. I want my person with me. I, you know, uh, I want to travel. I want, I want to do things. I want to do things that I didn't do at this point. Not because I'm old, because I just didn't do them because right. I was on the rise. I literally, um, got to the pinnacle of what, what most preachers want to do. I was a, I was a Christian television preacher every day. Six, seven days a week. My face wow. is on television for 16 years. Hosted Christian television. Just gave it up in November of last year because I lost the passion for it. Now I'm doing this full time. So it was good to build, but there were casualties. And, and, yeah. and, and, and in a lot of cases, my kids were the casualties. 
Mm. Adults can rebuild, but that mental thing of not having your dad there for special things and different events, that, that's, I have a son that deals with that, you know? Mm. Um, but we make those choices and we have casualties. And uh, unfortunate and unfortunate, the person that gets you in, in these years gets the best of you. That's so true, man. Yeah. But, I, but, but <clears throat> if I had to do all over again, there are several things I wouldn't do. I, wouldn't have be, I became a bishop 30 years ago. means I was 30. We were some of the youngest bishops. I wouldn't have done that. Mm. I probably wouldn't have got married when I got... I, but the same thing that helped me be successful, a blessing, it's also a curse. I don't mean to get deep. No, no, no. That's nah. no. We, we know that. That's what we're here for. It's yeah. true. My, uh, Judge Lynn told him when she came on here. She said, "When you get with a man in his building phase, you'll become a building block." Yep. And if you don't become a building block, you'll become his obstacle. So that's just a part of it. Can so I like, tell you, I married her because of that. I married her because of what I saw her doing, not because I just was like attractive. Wow. Attracted to her. Yeah. You was all business. I like that. She was uh, so she was your business partner, and it. And now you got a, now you got your wife now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we partners too. I mean, we doing the you know y'all real estate. We doing the Airbnb thing. We doing tour. We are doing all kind of getting ready to open the studio. We doing all kind of things too. But what I failed at doing, the the divorce was my fault. You know why? I'm that leader that I talked about. So I should have said, "This is too much. We need to slow down." Never said it because I enjoyed the ride. I didn't want to slow down. Mm. You know, my favorite movie, American Gangster, when he says success is trying to kill you. Success can kill you. Did you file for divorce? Yeah. Yeah, I did. It was amicable, though. She got up at, when we announced it to the church, she got up and told the church, don't y'all mess with him. He's still my hero. He helped me get where I'm at. We both admit that we got each other. Wow. She's, she's still pastoring. The two churches were. Yeah. So it was amicable. There wasn't no fighting, no fussing. We ain't fought, never. Wasn't no, wasn't no bad, nothing. Wasn't a bad divorce, wow. if there's any such thing. We just let our career, yeah, kill it. Wow. Yep. Man, that's a good testimony, man. It is. I wasn't expecting that. And you know, the funny thing is, it's like when I think about where I am and my vision, I got a very big vision. And I can imagine it's going to be some casualties along the way of my vision, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. And I, I, never, I never know exactly where it's going to happen. It don't have to be as many, though. It don't have to be as many. If you listen to the old man here. And it don't have to be, I don't think it has to be, you know, even as ugly, depending, about, depending upon how you go about mm -hmm. it. Um, but, again, you, go, you got a limited capacity and a limited bandwidth, and you got to apply your resources based upon where you purposefully want to go. And at the end of the day, everything else just kind of got to be, you know. You, you just, just got to balance it out. Had no balance. Even on vacation, we worked. Wow. We planned for the future on vacation. That was like a ritual. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, now, nah, yeah, I just want to lay out now. You know? I, yeah. So you, I think you did it right, though. You get rich with your lady, the next thing you know, you divorce and get you a nice young <laughs> <home>. <laughs> Hey, fellas, that's a good strategy right there. I like that, that one. Right. I like that strategy, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> get you a good business partner, build with her. Get it off. Hey, whether she older than you, whatever, perfect. And make sure she, matter of fact, get an older woman because she's going she gonna to have some good credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, ain't not, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> And then the younger one benefits from the good credit you have. Right, right, right. right, right. I'm done. Smooth selling after that. I'm done. <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you, Bishop, man, I appreciate you coming up on here and dropping this game and giving your testimony. That was powerful. Real smooth, I learned a lot man. from you. And um, I'm going to have to uh, probably get some clothes about your closet, too, because you fresh Come as on. hell, man. To this day! I'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> but what I need you to do now, man, I want you to talk to the people. Let the people know how they can get in contact with you. At Bishop Greg Davis on all platforms. I do a daily thing on Clubhouse uh, at 3 o'clock uh, on relationship when the right one comes. But at Bishop Greg Davis, Instagram, Twitter, every, everywhere. At Bishop Greg Davis, YouTube, when the right one comes. At Bishop Greg Davis sooner. At Bishop Greg Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's dope. That's dope. At Bishop Greg Davis. Again, I appreciate you, brother, for your time, for your energy, for the game, for the wisdom. And y'all got it too.
go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Watch us grow this thing. Let's grow this thing together, family. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Harley Initiated. We are out.